so let's continue our uh, components of a power distribution system so uh, in this we have <coughs> covered the distribution feeders and the type of feeding systems so now we will move on further to our uh, distribution system so in this we have distribution substation number one so uh, to remind you again we started with <coughs> the feeder connection systems so we had a substation uh, substation generation station feeder system distribution substation and we have uh, transformers and all that but we will study overhead lines in the underground cable right so what <coughs> do you see in the picture here is nothing but a 220 kV transmission tower right uh, again in this uh, seemingly complicated image uh, this is called as this is from a substation even though it looks very complicated in terms of the machineries that it uh, houses what happens here is nothing but <coughs> if you see over here it is coming inside the setup with 34 kilo volts and when it leaves it goes down to 7 point uh, 2 kilo volt so in when it enters in it is 34 kilo volt and when it goes out it is 7.2 kilo volt okay so this is basically a substation uh, which is a series of transformers again stepping up stepping down and there are so much of other <coughs> uh, components but technically it is just a, a transformer in a large scale with so many other supporting components this is all i would probably want you to understand at this stage <coughs> So uh, I have some definition, let's figure out uh, by reading this on what uh, this defines. An assembly of apparatus which can, which transforms the characteristics of electrical energy from one form to another. It can be from AC, or D AC to DC or from voltage to another. <coughs> so this is nothing but your transformer. In this case we are talking about a substation. So the classification of substations again <coughs> dependent upon so many uh, parameters here one is service based is it going to be static or is it going to uh, help us with converting anything next is uh, service voltage based so depending upon what voltage we are going to serve to our customer consumers the level of voltage plays uh, uh, forms <coughs> uh, voltage uh, forms a category and in accordance with the mounting whether it is going to be mounted indoors or it is going to be mounted out, outdoor in a pole or a, with the foundation so that and according to the constructions substations of the integrally built type substations of the composite build type uh, unit type factory fabricated substations with metal clad switch boards so this is one example that what you, whatever you see here even though it is a transformer it is also a pole mounted substation here even though this is not called as a substation yes this can be depending upon the purpose can be called as a substation but essentially it's a transformer what do you see here <coughs> with within a fenced uh, uh, area it's again a substation right so we, when we go back to this image where we are again referring to this seemingly complicated uh, uh, image <coughs> Like I told you, what happens is something enters at a much bigger voltage and leaves the facility with a smaller voltage. It can be the other way around as well depending upon the requirement. Right. So this is a quick uh, slide on the components of a substation. This uh, we don't have to know much about it. Just that the one, if you look at the image in the right, all that, this we must have seen in our, uh, at the end of our street or somewhere in our locality often. We call it as transformer in our local language, but yes, this also does, even though there is, of course, yes, that's a transformer, it is also called a substation because of the other arrangements and the function that it performs. So this particular slide, we just have a few of the components listed here. You can just go through this. So uh, <coughs> moving on further, we have been discussing about ACDC. We will just see what is that? What are the advantages of AC transmission systems? The AC transmission system is at a wide distance after generation. Like I told you, it is very efficient to uh, transmit electrical energy for a wide distance with uh, low maintenance cost. Disadvantages is more just because it is very powerful, more spacing is required between the insulators. Effect of capacitance and inductance, very complicated transmission system. <coughs> Resistance is high due to skin effect. So these are some of the uh, 
factors if at all somebody wants to move back and refer pressure upon their uh, knowledge about the basic science please feel free to do now i uh, move on we have complete uh, completed the substation part of it moving on further uh, we have this overhead lines so what what essentially comprise a overhead line is your conductors which is actually the uh, carrier of electricity the electrons supports and cross arm brackets insulators pole heating stay or guy wire and, uh, and many other miscellaneous uh, items such as lighting arrestor signage board and all that. right so coming into the first one conductor so what are the conductors like uh, in the initial lectures i told you copper is the best conductor that it allows smoothest possible flow of electrons so uh, uh, we have a couple of material here and uh, we have listed on the physical sorry physical properties and how it is uh, helping in terms of the electron movement one is copper one is aluminium one is steel one is ac sr which is aluminium conductor with steel reinforcement right <coughs> uh, line supports uh, are nothing but uh, what do you say sometimes if you see it in a 220 kv uh, big transmission tars you uh, the the tar <coughs> the tar that you see is made of something so that is uh, support or uh, you can even say our wooden poles tubular uh, poles reinforcement concrete poles sometimes and the steel tars all these are called as line supports and again there are a couple of uh, points which is uh, given uh, in terms of how it, how they should be in terms of their uh, application and function insulators the ones uh, the one in the top of line supports where you have this conductor coming in stopping they make a uh, uh, what do you say anchor and then before it goes to the before it continues to the next pole so wherever we have the support this is uh, this cannot mount come in just uh, mount on a random place so that is when we use insulators so they just come here we take support and they move further right so these are the insulators and again we have some of the points which is listed under insulators on how it can be Uh, designed or uh, standards to be followed and i have given some of the insulator types again insulator types there are several types of insulators listed here are uh, pin type suspension type strain type and stay insulators and the materials are usually uh, poor conductors of course of poor conductor have to be poor conductors of electricity so that's why we used uh, steatite glass and porcelain as the most common material but there are new other materials also coming up in the market and now uh, we spoke about uh, the uh, conductors insulators line support the fourth is the cable insulation so how do you uh, insulate the cable or what are the factors that one should be considering in insulating the cable so it should have high specific resistance meaning the resistance have to be uh, really really high it has to be tough and at the same time flexible should not be hygroscopic capable of standing high temperatures without much deterioration and non inflammable should not be attacked by acids or alkalis <clears throat> should not be capable of withstanding high rupturing volt should uh, sorry uh, high rupturing voltages low viscosity at working temperature low water absorption and low permittivity and uh, a couple of them coming up low water absorption low permittivity high viscosity at impreg impregnation temperature high mechanical strength high degree of safety and reliability and this is for underground cables so when we talk about line overhead lines so when we talk about uh, overhead it is called as lines and all the points that we see here is for uh, cables which is not overhead but underground cables so underground lines are called as cables and the one underground conductors are called as cables and the one which is going overhead is called as lines and uh, these are some points which i have put <coughs> uh where they exclusively talk about uh, the group of uh, the insulation materials and their group so ranging from rubber to paper to uh, uh, silk and cotton used for uh, various reasons so what is used for which purpose and their application and uh, uh, how it is uh, going to you know tackle the given uh, 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 yeah, set of requirements and all that so this uh, you we just have to know that all this exists we don't have to memorize anything as such so it is a good uh, uh, idea to just look at all of these uh, 
uh, as a type of insulation groups right and this is again uh, from a standard where uh, what class there are several classes and the allowable temperature and the type of material used in terms of the insulating materials and the next slide is again going to be something very related uh, the previous slide where i showed you the type of insulation materials and uh, these are some of the characteristics that each of those materials have naturally and uh, this defines their purpose okay we move on to classification of cables there are, uh, we've been studying about uh, the voltage ranges and all that so now we have uh, five such classifications one is uh, low tension up to 1000 volts which is 1 kV then you have high tension from uh, something above 1000 to 11000 kV 11000 volts super tension is something which ranges from 22 kV to 33 kV extra high tension is something from 33 kV to 66 kV extra super voltage cables are from 66 kV to 132 and further having said this so what is the requirement that uh, what is uh, what is the requirement that a cable uh, should ideally have the copper or aluminium conductor used should be of a size that the cable should carry the specified load current so remember uh, we studied about total connected load and all those so all those factors coming uh, come into play here so it should be able to carry the specified load current without uh, heating and uh, causing any <coughs> voltage drop the cable must have proper thickness of insulation so that it, uh, uh, it is reliable in terms of uh, its safety all the materials should have complete chemical and phys uh, physical stability throughout all the cables must be provided with proper mechanical protection so as to withstand the rough use and weighing them. And we have, uh, and this becomes a bit important and interesting as well. So, uh, it is interesting to note when uh, the wooden reels that you must have seen when they dig, uh, dig uh, when you've seen people, uh, the public departments digging the road to lay cable, you see this really big. Uh, wooden reels with cables in them so if you if you get to see the cross section of that there are uh, it is going to look like uh, you know it is going to have three or four cores right so that is what we are talking about here the cables have core identification so if they have one k one core it can be of either of those uh, r b y uh, r red black yellow and blue colors two core when they have two cores it is red and black usually when you have three core again there are colors then there's something called three and a half core. Then we have four core, five core, six core and above, right? So these uh, are used for different purposes and uh, the amount of load it is going to take. And of course, depending upon the number of cores, the insulation material will also be thicker and uh, <coughs> stronger. There are several types of insulation we will again uh, get to know about it. And uh, the cables, when you, if at all again you get a chance to look at them, the cables will have some code uh, written on them, which is A is aluminium conductor, Y is uh, PVC insulation, insulated cable, W you have uh, steel wired, uh, uh, basically you have steel as a armor for protection, WW, two W's are for steel double round wire armor, FF is uh, steel double flat strip armor, Y is PVC outer sheet. Uh, MFL flat cables <coughs> right so this is how it is going to look uh, the one that we see here both the images are uh, we have this uh, red uh, blue and yellow and black colors so they also say one core of 25 square millimeter this is the cross-sectional area of this so we have one two three and 0.5 which is 12.5 square mm so this is called as three and half 3.5 square millimeter aluminium armored cable because it is armored with the end end layer is armored before as a part of their insulation right uh, and again over here it is a smaller uh, 3.5 core cable but just that the cross sectional area has reduced a bit so this is 25 square mm this is uh, 16 square mm and so the 0.5 will be 8 square mm so these are underground cables core usually is made of uh, standard copper insulation again we've uh, studied about the types of types and groups of insulating materials in the previous uh, slides metallic sheet uh, usually is done because they're going to go underground uh, we have to be very careful about the uh, moisture entry 
so that metallic sheath is made of lead or lead alloy uh, bedding is uh, again a protecting protective metallic sheath against uh, corrosion and from mechanical injury because they are again going to be buried under uh, a particular depth under the ground and armoring is to avoid mechanical injury <coughs> uh, this is usually galvanized steel serving protect the armoring from atmospheric conditions this is basically a fibrous material and uh, in, we talk, we seen about the insulating materials over here we are interested in knowing about the properties that uh, we can uh, desire uh, for the insulating materials of cables different methods of laying we i'll just quickly go through all this we just have to know this we don't have to get into the details of it uh, so we have different uh, methods of laying cables which is uh, cables buried directly underground and uh, there's something called as a draw in system and there is something called a solid state of uh, laying the cable right so now uh, just that we spoke about overhead and underground uh, system we will just quickly compare uh, what is uh, the differences or advantages between uh, each of them so <coughs> advantages of overhead system over underground system is naturally because it is above the ground you can identify where the line goes faulty and in terms of maintenance it's going to be very easy uh, while maintenance and repair just because the fault location can be detected easily and the initial cost is uh, much lower uh, more spacing so charging current is low uh, jointing well, you must have seen you just have to uh, uh, go to the existing line and quickly make a joint and have uh, <coughs> more uh, connections extracted uh, disadvantages is maintenance cost is usually high uh, safety because it is above the ground this is uh, main reason when we have a flood or heavy rain some of these lines come in contact with the water which is lying uh, getting clogged in the road and the risk is very high and uh, sometimes you as architects we know where we build a nice uh, elevation we design a nice elevation and we have this these wires decorating our front elevation and we have no control over its appearance it becomes very messy and uh, during lightning and thunderstorms these becomes one of the main sources to uh, you know they become they are naturally conductors so they are they are prone to uh, lightning attacks and all that <coughs> accidents due to maintenance and all that and uh, this is how an actual cable uh, looks uh, over here what we have is uh, we have three core conductors uh, <coughs> which must be copper uh, uh, and all that uh, uh, each of these copper stands are uh, protected with aluminium insulating sheet and uh, we have several other inner uh, lead casing and all that so apart from that what i want you to see here is that oil duct so each of these cables uh, between two of those uh, you always have you already you are uh, you have a uh, oil duct where you have some some kind of oil which is getting uh, filled which is small uh, molecular structure of hydrogen purging fluid so this is basically an additional layer of insulation that uh, is being done here apart from the usual outer covering sheets and uh, insulation right so this is going to this is basically a 33 kV high voltage cable really high voltage cable and that is why we need to have additional insulator insulating arrangement for this uh, sort of a cable and finally uh, so we have uh, come to this distribution system whatever is remaining is uh, feeder we spoke about the feeding arrangement uh, distributor is something uh, okay a feeder a conductor which connects major substation to the distributor distribution is a conductor which uh, uh, connects uh, the uh, feeder output to the uh, consumers and service main is something which connects a consumer to the distributor so now uh, moving on further we will have to know about metering panels so this is a slide where i'm taking you to metering panels uh, right so a panel uh, contains a single panel or it can be a group of panels uh, designed according to the electrical engineer strategy and planning so it usually includes bus bar we will try to understand bus bar are bigger cables which can carry more currents main power isolator power transformers switches and fuses motor starter unit capacitor banks electronic controls relays meters and indicator lamps and these are just uh, 
the entire list is not limited to just 10 of these but there are so many other things which can happen in the panel further the panel can have single line diagrams painted pasted in approved format we will study we will be studying about fuse and relays in our third module but i will just quickly run through this fuse and over protective uh, device with the circuit opening fusible member directly heated and destroyed by the passage of over current through it relay is a device that is operated by variation in condition of one electric circuit to affect operation of other devices in the same or another electrical circuit right so panel metering so th this is the last segment of uh, this module uh, subheading uh, we are supposed to know uh, metering panels st panels transformers and all that so we are in the pan metering panels uh, segment so this metering panel is uh, uh, the basic equipment where uh, we can uh, track the usage of energy right so be it any consumer you can be a, a home a normal residence to single phase or three phase industry with high voltage uh, whatever it is this metering panel is going to be the only source for the government or the supplier of electricity to track how much you have used in a particular duration of time based on that consumption of energy we are going to charge they are going to charge us right uh, so this also gives the definition of an electric uh, energy meter that measures the amount of energy considered consumed by a residence or any facility uh, this is you uh, we all must be knowing this is installed at the consumer's premises so within our site within our premises for building purposes they have uh, usually it is in our country it is a kilowatts uh, per hour kilowatt hour they are usually read once each in uh, each billing period right so over here i have just uh, put a panel uh, image which shows you a panel to determine if it is a hd or lt is uh, going to be difficult unless and until you get there and see what voltage it is handling right a uh, lt panel is something which handles low voltage so it is single phase 230 volts or three phase 400 volts usually high, high tension is applicable for bulk uh, purchases uh, who need uh, like industry uh, several kilo volts or above right so a panel is going to typically look like this and depending upon the capacity that it handles it can be called as lt panel or a hd panel we have come to the end of this segment transformer is uh, Well, probably one of the repeated questions but uh, i will not be covering it in detail because this is more of the electricity part of it so probably uh, it would be a nice idea if you guys can go and understand transformer in detail if you have to answer it for a 20 mark or 10 mark question but i believe all of us know what a transformer is and what it does it is a static device for transforming electrical energy from one type of current which is ac to dc or uh, dc to ac without any change in frequency so remember we spoke about the light the electrons moving back and forth so that happens uh, in ac <coughs> so with, there shouldn't be any change in the frequency it changes voltage from high to low low to high with a corresponding increase and decrease in current respectively called step down and step up step up transformer so that is all for transformer i will again quickly take you through the type of transformer this is all for you to go through i am not going to talk about it in detail the transformer types can be again according to the core voltage the phases that it handles to the power and according to how it is cooled <coughs> right uh, what we probably need to understand is because we've been talking about transformer right from the generation plant uh, till the uh, service mains which is connecting feeding your uh, the pole which is standing right in front of your house so depending upon at which stage a transformer is placed it is called as a distribution transformer sometimes if it is in the other end of the spectrum it is called as a power transformer right uh, <coughs> switch gear yes this is uh, an uh, evolved and a much advanced switch basically it is just a switch just that it has got several uh, uh, you know evolved thought process inside it so uh, it is a comp imagine a switch gear as a complicated switch right a combination of electrical disconnect switches fuses or circuit breakers used to control protect and isolate electrical equipment simple as that so it is a combination of several switches or fuses or circuit breakers used to control protect and isolate electrical equipment switch gear is used to uh, 
uh, use both of de-energized equipment to allow work to be done or to clear false downstream. So basically, this is going to be located uh, uh, sometimes along with your panels or uh, sometimes in isolation where you can uh, you know isolate the entire system or the entire area according to the requirement whether you're going to maintain it or repair it. So this is going to take care of that's uh, a big energy uh, you know <coughs> system that's why i told you this is a combination of something but it is just necessary basically it is just a small switch but in a large scale right so that's why it is it can be imagined as a complicated switch right i have given some more details about uh, switch gear the so switching power supply basic types of switch gear uh, we will be studying about it again we'll be coming back to the some uh, some of this in our uh, Module 3 protective devices, but uh, the, <coughs> the uh, theory part is listed here for you to quickly read through and understand uh, uh, if at all we have to look at it from the examination point of view. Ring main unit, uh, this is again interesting uh, unit, a ring main unit is a compact seal for life. Uh, metal enclosed switch gear widely used in urban power distribution network so it includes a combination of uh, again several types of switch come earth switch as an incomer outgoing feeder vacuum circuit breaker with the associated disconnector and earth switch for load feeders depending upon the requirement it is available in different voltage ratings so ring main unit uh, how, if we have to understand it it is uh, even more complicated than a switch gear because it it uh, like you if you can read in this first definition uh, they talk about it includes a combination of several uh, brake switches, load brake switches. Uh, you have earth switch as uh, incomer, and there is a feeder which is uh, going to be uh, taking the power energy to some other uh, uh, unit. And we have several circuit breakers associated with disconnector and earth switch for load feeders. Uh, so, but end of the day, all of these are going to just look like a box. So for a layman, it is just going to look at a, look like a box. But the function that it does inside this is all is making the difference. And uh, how to identify ring main unit if you again go to these boxes like I told you how you can't distinguish LT panel and HT panel without uh, getting near and uh, looking at the uh, numbers which is written over there. If it is less than 1000 it is low voltage LT panel, if it is more than 1000 it is HT panel. So similarly, so these boxes are panels that we see, uh, some of them will have uh, their names written on it saying this is a ring main unit. Because it makes the job easier for the uh, technicians who's going to uh, for them is what this entire uh, ring main unit uh, functions for, right? Uh, so it it can be switched usually uh, in the premises and it can be seen in a large uh, facility. We can see if at all we go, go to malls and all that, and if you get to get a chance to look at any of these boxes, just observe. So they might have ring main units. And uh, this is the uh, final few slides of the module, the chapter. So I have just told you, uh, I just listed uh, some of the electrical accessories which uh, we must be coming across in our daily life. The difference between phase and a line is uh, the hot conductor supplying electricity in a three phase are called as lines. They are not called as phases. Remember phase is the one which is associated with the frequency and the way it is getting generated. Uh, remember the lines that we spoke about uh, earth which is green, line which is red and uh, neutral which is black. So this line is not called as phase, this is the line itself. So these are the hot lines, conductors carrying electricity and they are called lines not phases. Phase exists between the line and the neutral in the star Y connected system like I have uh, quickly shown you a slide where I ask you to go and find out uh, the differences, uh, find out meaning, brush up uh, your uh, science knowledge which you have studied in your schools. So the diagrams which is delta, Y connected system, star connected system and all that. Mm, in that the difference of voltage between the line and uh, the neutral is called as the phase. So a line voltage therefore exists between any two lines whereas a phase voltage is between this and this. And uh, uh, I'm not going to give an assignment as such, but from now on, whenever you see, whenever you go to a small household or a 
walk in the streets or go to a mall or a big industrial facility whenever you see this transformer yards or dg diesel generating yards or any panel uh, rooms so <coughs> try to just peep in as in not peep in just try to observe the boxes which is standing right there the, they will have a sign board saying this is uh, this this is that the type of voltage that it handles and all that if at all you pay attention you can definitely relate with whatever we have been seeing in this module i hope that helps in the long run and in the next module we'll be studying about internal electrical distribution system so now uh, and uh, renewable energy system so now to summarize what all have we studied we started with the basics of electricity then we moved on to the basics of uh, electrical services then we started about generation where is the power being generated then how it is transmitted and how it is distributed this entire spectrum of generating to transmission to uh, distribution we have studied and once when it reaches the uh, building we have studied about several panels what uh, panel what are the types of panel and in between we have studied about the cables and lines insulation materials <coughs> uh, the conductors the type and range of insulation materials and some of the electrical equipments involved in this entire processes right so in the next module which is uh, module 2 we have completed module 1 in the next module we'll be talking about so after the current reaches a particular building so what happens inside that particular uh, consumer's compound in this building is what we are going to discuss in the next module along with renewable energy systems thank you